So, uh, hi. I just want to do a real quick announcement. Just um, we mentioned it last weekend, and um, tomorrow. Well, actually, this is a whole weekend of party, party, party. All the graduates and everything happening. So, um, we're one of them. So, if you guys can make it by tomorrow, um, June fourth at two p.m., we're going to have open house and celebrate Ben's graduation from Chesapeake High School. Yay! And Abby flew into town just for the occasion. So we have we have all the chicks in the house. So we're very lots to celebrate. So come and join with us. Thank you. So I guess to add to that, there's food, right? There will be food. We're barbecuing. There will be food. Open house. Come as you are. Come as you like. Uh, come and eat. Come and drink. The pool is open. Abby was in it today. It's like 78 degrees. Uh, thank you for the sunlight that helps warm it all up. Uh, and uh, as my wife says, usually, if you come, you can stay as late as you like. But when she puts on her pajamas, that's when you have to head out. Uh, is that right, honey? Is that what you're saying? Okay, good. So that's uh, tomorrow. It begins at 3. Also, though, as uh, Debbie Banger came in, she reminded me, we have uh, the LWML is doing their raffle for the summer basket. So out in the Welcome Center, you see a beautiful basket filled with lots of stuff. Probably weighs about 40 pounds, I'm guessing. Or about that. So come get, lift your weights. Tickets are $5 a piece. All the tickets that are sold will be uh, given to... Uh, Wellspring Life Ministry. So we're looking to do a, a way of supporting them in their ministries. And so uh, buy your tickets today, and they'll be on sale through the end of this month, through the 25th. Uh, so please make sure you do that. Now, uh, today we have a special guest here with us because we're looking at having a special Sunday. This is, as you can tell, the colors behind me have changed. We now have white. Last week it was red. Before that it was white. It's not that we're just trying to flip it back and forth. We actually celebrate something special. We celebrate what we call the Trinity, where God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as we do that today, we're going to hear a special reading from Matthew 28. You all heard it before. Jesus says, all authority has been given to me, so go and make disciples. You go and baptize them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, on this day, we celebrate that gift of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But also, as you think about that going aspect, we're going to be having a special speaker here with us today to be able to teach us about what's called food for the poor. Now, they haven't been here in my time in the last four years, but I know that Food for the Poor speakers have come annually for many years. So if you're like me and maybe need a little, little more information about it, turn your attention to the screen. I like Food for the Poor because we help people build houses, rooms, schools, so I thank Food for the Poor. The people of this community are from very poor background. Every family can own their own home. With this project, all the community can have water. Thank you very much what you're doing for my, to my country, to bring all kind of help yes, us. Yes, yes. Yes, God bless you. Yes, bless you. Give a man a fish and you feed him for the day. Teach him how to fish and you give him an occupation that will sustain him throughout his lifetime. This is an ancient proverb, but it still holds true today and defines the work we do here at Food for the Poor. Since 1982, Food for the Poor has been working tirelessly to lift the poor out of poverty, giving them the training and tools they need to make sustainable changes that will benefit their families and communities for generations to come. When you partner with Food for the Poor, you can help address sustainable development goals, such as ending poverty and hunger, reducing inequality, clean water, sanitation, renewable energy, meeting medical needs, and providing a path to prosperity with education and sustainable development. When you provide a gift of time, talent, or treasure to Food for the Poor, you are making an investment in a person, a family, and a community. Your contribution multiplies with time as our projects grow. Food for the Poor empowers the poor, giving them the tools to break the cycle of poverty. Food for the Poor, really amazing ministry. And for that today, to be able to share a little bit about it is going to be uh, the, uh, just I'll say, uh, prestigious, is that a good way to say? Uh, the Reverend Dr. Roy Mack. Uh, you guys might recognize that last name, Mack. Uh, David Mack, uh, Pastor David Mack, who actually tomorrow is going to be celebrating 40 years in ministry. 40-year anniversary as they celebrate tomorrow over at St. Paul's in Glen Burnie at 3 o'clock. He'll be celebrating. So, uh, Roy, you'd come up not only to share with us about food for the poor, but also be able to celebrate his son's uh, many years in service to the church. And I got to say, to have a son who's 40 years in ministry, you look like you're like 33, 34 years old. Not sure how that all works out. 
But uh, Roy is 91 years old. He said I could say that. 91 years old, drove all the way up here from Florida, because that's what you do when you're 91, you go to Florida. But he drives around, he, he preaches and teaches at different uh, places to share with them about the ministries of food for the poor. Now, besides that, also, to speak a little bit of his accolades, served as a, a parish pastor for many years, served as district president for our district here, the Southeastern District. As I asked him when, he said back in the 90s, which seems like a long time ago, from 92 to 98, 1992, 1998, not 18, but 1992 to 1998. So uh, he has served our church body, served the Lord's kingdom in amazing ways, and today he's going to share with you a message on how we can be able to be able to support food for the poor, uh, uniting in God's work for God's kingdom. So how about let's go and begin our worship this day. Let's stand together and start with our opening songs. We introduced a song to you last week that I hope has been reverberating in your spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, why do you look so happy? worship this day, we do so by remembering that triune God, whose name was placed upon us in the waters of baptism. So we begin in the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gathered in the name of the one who created all things, and unites us to Christ through our baptism, we prepare to receive God's good gifts to us all. 
With confidence, let us draw near to God, confess our sin, and be renewed in God's mercy and grace. We have a time of just silent confession of our sins before our God, before we go to him in prayer. We pray responsibly for our failure to be attentive to the care of your creation. Father, forgive us for our neglect of ourselves in body, soul, and spirit. Father, forgive us for our lack of care for the poor and the unloved. Lord Jesus, forgive us for our false pride and failure to live confidently in your love. Lord Jesus, forgive us for our sins of selfishness and all our sins known and unknown. Holy Spirit, forgive us for our failure to recognize the gifts given and supported in your power. Holy Spirit, forgive us. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God's love is shown to us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. As a caller and servant of God and by Christ's authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, in the water of baptism, you were joined with Christ and made a child of God. Anointed with the Holy Spirit, you are free to live as God's people, sent to serve the world. You may be seated. Let's join together our voices in song. Never fail. 
God, who is three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who never, ever fails. Let's go to him at this time in prayer. Please join with me as printed on our screens. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity in the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. On this day, as we marvel at God's person as the triune God, the Old Testament reading exalts him as the one who, in the beginning, said, let there be, and brought all creation into existence. With joy, we hear the creation song, Genesis 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. And let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, 
Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's epistle lesson continues Peter's Pentecost sermon. He gets right to the point that God raised Jesus from the dead and exalted Jesus to his right hand as Lord and Christ. As we hear him, we know he's not just talking to the people in Jerusalem in 30 AD. He's talking to us. We hear from Acts 2, 22 to 36. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Anne. Out of respect for today's gospel reading, can we stand together as God's people? Now, in no other place in Holy Scripture is God's name as the triune God more clearly stated than in today's gospel lesson. It comes to us in connection with Jesus' command to go and to make disciples, to baptize and to teach. We hear from the last paragraph of Matthew's gospel. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. 
Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay, on this day, we celebrate the Holy Trinity, and we also have a tradition in our church where we speak what's called the Athanasian Creed. What it does is it confesses what God reveals about himself, but also it confesses who God isn't. And because of its length, I'll say, the verboseness of its language, we're going to do it responsibly. It's printed on the screen. So if you would, uh, join me in a responsive reading of the Athanasian Creed. Whoever will be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will without doubt perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, and the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty. And yet there are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son Lord, and the Spirit Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also we are prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not made nor created nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another. None is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal. So that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and the unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it also is necessary to everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God begotten from the, from the substance of the Father before all ages. And he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
At his king, all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly, he cannot be saved. You may be seated. Boy, that was a long creed there. We only do that once a year, so that's the marathon run. But I'd like to invite all of our young ones, our children, to come forward for a special kids' message. You want to come on up? I know we got a few kids up here today. Go ahead and come on up here. It's graduation, and it's also summer and end of school. Are you excited for the end of school? Yeah, I figured so. You know, my kids were excited too. Actually, my kids are all done with school. You still have a few more weeks, right? And you're almost in school, right? Want to give me a high five? Awesome. Scoot over a little bit. Come over here. We'll get closer. Well, we just said a whole bunch of really big words, right? And you guys probably didn't follow those big words because they're really big words. But I want to talk to you about the first reading we had from Genesis. It's how God made everything. You know how he made it? He just spoke. He said it, and it happened. And you know what he made? He made things that fly. He made things that go in the water. He made things that are on the land. Well, look at the screen real quick. What are those things? Can you see those things over there? See right up on the screen? What are those guys? Butterflies. Butterflies. What colors do you see up there? I see, I hear blue back there. I see you got bigger kids back there. I see blue. I see orange. I see yellow and green. Do you see the green one up there too? There's also a screen up there. It's a little bit easier to see. You know what? And it says God made all of them. How do you make them? By speaking. He said, let there be. And there's butterflies. But that's not all the things he made that fly. On the next one, he made birds, like robins. Have you ever seen a robin in your yard? They have red on their chest, and they go around, they eat worms, and they like to dig in the grass. And he made fish. Those are the fish in the sea. He made Nemo, right? You see the crown fish up there? He made big manta rays and, and whales. He made little tiny fish in aquariums. And he made big puffer fish. You know what a puffer fish looks like? Oh, it gets all puffed up. He made all of that just by speaking. You know what else he made? He made, well, look at this next picture. Can you see those up there? What's on there? Can you tell what those animals are? He made, well, actually, that's a worm, but you're close. Yeah, he made made snakes too. He made worms, and he made, what's that big gray one? With the big ears. Elephant. He made elephants and kangaroos. What do kangaroos do? They jump, right? A crocodile, too. He made all of those things. And what's that one, the very middle one? Have you seen those before? It's got eight legs. Anyone help us back there? What's that one in the middle? They all knew. It's an octopus. They live in the water. Like, you like to go boating over the water, too, right? And there's that, what's that big brown fuzzy one? A, a, a pol- it's a bear. A polar bear is white. That one's brown, though. But you're right. It's a big fuzzy wuzzy bear. And so God made all those things, you know how? By speaking. He said, let there be, and all those animals, butterflies and, and birds, and what was the other one, the birds? Oh, all the fish. And you got elephants and kangaroos and octopuses, which are pretty cool. Well, you know, we said that all those words before you guys came up, really big words. And all we were saying is who God is. We said, thank you, God, for who you are, for all you've done for us. But you know what? When I think of all those animals, there's a song I know. You want to try to sing it with me? Can I teach you it? It's a pretty cool song. And actually, it goes like this. It says, you got to make your hands like this. Can you put your hands like this? Yeah, you can do it. Put your, put your thumbs out and grab your thumbs. So do, like, do this way. Like you're waving to every, wave to everyone out there. Can you want to try it? Put your hands together. He's not sure. He's like, I don't know. He's asking me, oh, there you go. Yeah. And, and the song goes like this, okay? I'll sing it, and you can act it out with me, okay? He goes, If I were a butterfly, I thank you, Lord, for giving me wings. And if I were a robin in a tree, I thank you, Lord, that I could sing. And if I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd giggle with glee. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. For you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me his child. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. Cool song? 
I know, I don't have a great voice. Tom can tell you I don't have a great voice. But I can sing about all that God's done for me. And he made all those animals. You know what? The song goes on. You know those ones up there? I'll tell you the second verse. Can you do it with me? Make like you have an elephant trunk. Go like this. It goes, if I were an elephant, I thank you, Lord, by mayors in my trunk. And if I were a kangaroo, what am I going to do? You know, I'd hop right up to you. And if I were an octopus, go like this. Make like you have lots of arms. An octopus, I thank you, Lord, for my fine looks. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. For, can you make a heart? You gave me a heart, and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus, and you made me a child. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. You want to do the last verse? With, see those pictures up there? The little one's a worm. You ever see worms in the yard? So do this, do this. Little worm. Can you do a worm? It goes, if I were a wiggly worm, I thank you, Lord, that I could squirm. And if I were a fuzzy wuzzy bear, I thank you, Lord, for my fuzzy wuzzy hair. And if I were a crocodile, do this with a big mouth. I thank you, Lord, for my big smile. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. For he gave me a what? Gave me a heart, and he gave me a smile. He gave me Jesus, and he made me his child. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. Pretty good song, huh? You did a good job. They're clapping for you out there. Well, see, so that whole thing we did called the Athanasian Creed, all we're doing is saying, thank you, God, for telling us who you are and all that you did. And that's a song that if I was any of those animals, that's how I'd say thank you. Can we say thank you to God? We can. So how about let's fold our hands. Can you pray with me, okay? Repeat after me, okay? Dear God, thank you for everything, especially... Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Awesome. You guys want to head back to your seats? And we'll continue with our next song, okay? the highest your name is the greatest 
end the sermon, just a few words, personal words, if I may. Pastor introduced me. I served as a pastor and as a district president. And uh, I was in a church up in Red Wing, Minnesota, a few weeks ago. I travel all over the country for Food for the Poor, which is an interdenominational ministry, by the way. And it's kind of exciting to work with people of various denominations, raising money for the poor. And I introduced myself by saying, hi, I'm Roy, and I'm a recovering parish pastor. <laughs> recovering not from being one, but from not being one. I recovered from being a district president the day I walked out of the office. But parish pastor, I go back to it in a heartbeat, but who wants a 91-year-old pastor? Well, two elderly ladies walked out of church that morning, and they said, We'll take you. <laughs> I didn't pursue it any further. What a joy to be back here to Galilee Lutheran Church. I, I have spoken here before. Some of you, well, probably nobody would remember. But at any rate, I uh, was here, I think, for the installation of Pastor Clocker. And uh, there were several other occasions that brought me here as well when I served in the district. But you really have a wonderful, gifted, and talented, in so many ways, pastor in Pastor Ma Matthew Hilfer. Wow, what a great guy. I, I've only known him now for a few months, but I got to know him pretty well at the pastor's conference. We had meals together and so forth several months ago. And have a great regard and a great respect for him. Also want to mention that uh, I was a little bit involved when the congregation switched from the American Lutheran Church to the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. And uh, some of you may have been around at that time. And I uh, want to thank you for doing that. Uh, we're certainly welcoming, uh, continue to welcome a great congregation. So those are just a few words of introduction. And now the sermon. I'd like to begin with a prayer, Heavenly Father, I've, I've worked honestly on this sermon, and it's the best that I can do, at least under the circumstances. Please help me so that I may live to become an increasingly uncluttered channel of your grace. And to that end, may I think your thoughts after you and speak your word. I love you, and I love these people whom I'm privileged to serve. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Old Testament text on this Trinity Sunday was from Genesis chapter 1, the creation story. And it's interesting that God created, first of all, light, even before he created the heavenly bodies. And you'll have to ask the pastor how that can be, uh, because uh, I'm not going into any theological dissertation this evening. But he did create light before anything. And light is kind of a theme of, of food for the poor. When Jesus says, let your light shine, you know, and then we are a reflection of that light as we serve, particularly those in need. And speaking of light, um, were any of you here born at home, say, rather than in a hospital? Anybody? This last, oh, thank you. One, two. Okay, I was born in a parsonage kind of in the foothills of the Ozarks in Missouri where my dad served as pastor. And my dad always loved to tell the story about the doctor who delivered me, delivered babies all over that farm community. And the farmers, none of them had any electricity at that time back in the early 30s. And so the farmer's wife was going to deliver a baby and the doctor was there and the farmer's holding the lantern, and the baby is delivered, and it seemed to be fine, and the farmer and his wife were happy. But then the doctor says, wait a minute, he says, I think there's another one here, and sure enough, twins were born. Now, my wife and I can relate to that, because we did not know that we were having twins, but we had these two boys, one of whom you know, and the other one will be here tomorrow, by the way, uh, David Mack, who's with the Lutheran Mission Society, 
he was our firstborn, and then we had another boy. And we prayed real hard for a girl, and we asked our congregation to pray for a girl. All of our friends prayed for a girl, and we, guess what? We prayed too hard, and we got twin girls. So, so be, be very careful about what you pray for, okay? Well, now, back to the farmer. The farmer, uh, at this point, the wife and farmer are saying, well, God has been blessed us, and we'll, we'll work it out somehow. But then the doctor says, wait a minute, I think there's another one here. And sure enough, triplets were born, whereupon the farmer who's holding the lantern starts backing out of the room, and the doctor protests and says, come back, uh, bring the light back, I need the light. And the farmer protests back and says, no, I think it's the light that's attracting them. <laughs> and it is, and it was, and it continues to be the light of Jesus Christ that attracts them and causes us to be in ministry. Isaiah 58, verse 7. Share your bread with the hungry, and then your light will shine. The world needs to hear our voice, but also needs to feel our touch as we serve one another. Matthew 25, serving the least among them. That's kind of a theme passage of food for the poor. Matthew 25 the last sermon that Jesus preached before going to the cross, by the way. Live more simply in order that others may simply live. Proverbs 21, if you close your ear to the poor, you might cry out someday and not be heard. Jesus goes down to the blind and to the lame and to the poor, and he lifts them up. You want to know what the kingdom of God is all about? The least will be served. Matthew 11, I have found in my ministry, particularly as I served the district, that the church so often is like a giant pyramid <clears throat> where the greatest are at the peak <clears throat> and there are fewer equals. But our Lord says, it shall not be so among you. <clears throat> and he turns that pyramid upside down so that the greatest are still at the peak, but look where the peak is down here, where more people can be served in love. Jesus calls us not up to rule, but he calls us down to service. And on the cross is where he reached the greatness of service. And as promised, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. <coughs> so it's not our attainment that counts, but it's his atonement that counts. We are called to repentance, to forgiveness, to have the filters lifted from our eyes and to see the least among us. And the least among us in the Western Hemisphere are those in Central America, the Caribbean, uh, places like Haiti. And I have been to all of these places, people living in cardboard boxes or mud huts and having nothing to eat, food for the poor, raises enough money in order to serve as many of them as possible. Jesus warned us about the accumulation of wealth only for ourselves. Nothing wrong with being wealthy. As Americans, I suppose almost all of us are what you might call wealthy in the eyes of some people in the world. But it's when we keep it all for ourselves that um, we perhaps are not heeding some of the desires of our Lord and Savior himself. God serves others through us. So it's not simply about raising a hand to God, but it's also reaching a hand out to those who are least among us. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me water. Be an organ donor. Give your heart to Jesus. Jesus shared, shows us how to serve by dying on a cross for us, to redeem us, to redeem us so that we can serve. I am with you always, he says, even to the very end of the age. And the Apostle Paul says, be imitators of God. Walk in love, even as Christ has loved us. Dear ones, let us not simply love in words, but also in actions. Love is the theme of the New Testament as the theme 
of the Ministry of Food for the Poor. Bear one another's burdens, show hospitality, and in the, that you will show, you will entertain angels unaware. People tell me, but Pastor, charity begins at home. And yes, it does, but it doesn't stop there, moves beyond. We had a chaplain serving the federal prisons in Hagerstown, Maryland, uh, some years ago, and um, the inmates really enjoyed having him around and having him as a chaplain there. Uh, if nothing else, they could get out of their cells on Sunday morning uh, to hear the word. And so he had quite a congregation. And after several years, he announced that he was going to be away, that he was going to go on a sabbatical leave and be gone for a while. So they quickly wrapped a gift in the only wrappings that they had, which were newspapers, and they asked him not to open it until he got home. Well, when he got home, he opened the gift that they had given him as a going away present, and he found his own watch, his own billfold, <laughs> and a number of other personal items that these professionals had lifted from him. But it was the note that was contained therein that made such a difference. The note, I don't know if they realized it or not, but they were quoting from First Chronicles verse 29. We didn't have anything to give you, so we gave you what was yours in the first place. <laughs> now isn't that what we do to what we give to what God gave us in the first? Gospel says, as I love you, so you are to love one another. God's love is lavished upon us and we are flourishing because of it. You know, I'm sure that you you in your life have people saying, hi Roy, hi John, hi whatever, how are you? You know? Now, I used to be tempted to say, oh, I'm so glad you asked. Have a seat here. It'll take me about an hour and a half to tell you how I am, you know? Well, I did that with a few of my friends and uh, didn't go over real well. But, uh, I've come to this. When somebody says to you, hi, Roy, or whatever your name, how are you? Flourishing. In the spirit of Psalm 23, my cup runs over, and I try to use the overflow to help others. I give you permission to use that. I, I don't have it patented anywhere. <laughs> Which calls attention then to the brochure that you have. I don't intend to read it to you at all. You can read it yourself. You see different ways in which you can help people when you open the brochure. I think all of you have one. And uh, you'll see where a house, it's amazing to me how many people have bought houses for these people who live in cardboard boxes and mud huts for $9,800. Well, there are people who can actually do that, believe it or not. And then there are much, much uh, more inexpensive ways to support the poor, as is indicated in the brochure. Now, what you can do is you can either put some money in to the packet there. You see where the highlighted area is. You can tear it off and you have an envelope that's already stamped and addressed. And you can send it directly to Food for the Poor. Or if you care to put some money in there tonight, uh, you may do so and give it to me when you walk out of the church and we put it into a Brinks bag and send it off to Food for the Poor and it gets to the right place. It's amazing how many people are willing to support that ministry. Acts chapter 2 encourages us along that line. Uh, 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 the motivation being Jesus Christ. And that was what you heard in Acts chapter 2. The motivation. You see there are five, there are two sets of five monosyllables that are a summation of our Christian faith for all time. They're recorded in Acts chapter 2, which was read a little while ago, and also recorded in uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Two sets of monosyllables. Christ died for our sins. And the second set, Christ rose from the dead. That's it. That's the summation of our Christian faith. That's the reason to help others and to serve. That's our motivation. That's the power to love and to forgive and to share. I believe that the best is yet to come for each of you 
and for this congregation. And you know how I know that? Because the worst is over. Christ died for us. Christ rose again for us. So it's not our attainment, but his atonement that counts. So I thank, I thank the Lord for giving me the ability at my tender age of 91 to share this message with you. And I also thank God for giving me a wonderful congregation with whom to share it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'd like to close with, I began with a prayer, I'd like to close with one. It's, it's uh, from Philemon, which only has one chapter in that book. And uh, it's verses four to seven, my closing prayer. I thank God always as I remember you in my prayer, for I hear of your love and of the faith that you have in the Lord Jesus. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may promote the good that is ours in Christ Jesus. For I have derived much joy and comfort from you, my dear brothers and sisters, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Philemon 4, verse 7. Close then in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Roy. As he mentioned, there's a little pamphlet you have when you, when you came in. You can definitely take them home with you if you're able to uh, give any offerings or things today. Uh, I think we all can say we feel that we are uh, definitely filled by the Lord, but uh, boy, that our cup would overflow. And that uh, as we not only offer them our tithes, but we'd also be able to support the many ministries of Food for the Poor. We'll continue then uh, uh, as we collect our offerings then this day. Uh, and as we do that, go ahead and record your record of fellowship in the books that are there. Use the QR codes with your phone. And we'll join our voice together and be glad. Praise the Lord this day. We also go to him in prayer, knowing that he always hears our prayers and that he answers according to our needs and his will and his timing. 
Today we'll continue keeping our prayers. Uh, food for the Poor Ministries in Latin America and the Caribbean. Also, as we did not share, also they were serving in Ukraine and also many other places around the world as too. Uh, a prayer request that we have as you came in, hopefully you got the announcement sheet. On the back side are a lot of very colorful announcements. Uh, things are going on. Food for the Poor mentioned here, VBS. On the front side are a number of the individuals that, who requested prayers over the last few weeks. And we do have uh, one additional prayer request uh, for today. This one actually comes from uh, Dylan Zoke, our DC. Dylan received a divine call to teach at a school in Towson at Concordia Prep. He has uh, accepted that call, and he'll be teaching there this coming fall. So Dylan's asking we keep him in our prayers as he's looking forward to that transition, as we also know also the transition to getting married as well. A lot of things going on for Dylan this next year, but as we bid uh, farewell to him in a number of weeks, we'll also keep in our prayers knowing that God's kingdom will be blessed through his ministries. So along with Dylan and Sarah, and uh, with Food for the Poor, let's, let's bow our heads and join our hearts in time of prayer. Holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, Lord, we bless your name because you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Guard your church, purchased with the blood of Jesus. Keep us true in faith, without error or schism or compromise, until that day that you welcome us into your heavenly dwellings as your spotless bride. Almighty Father, as the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the deep, you uttered your word and the world was created. In the waters of holy baptism, you have spoken our names. You have declared us righteous. You have drawn us to Jesus, who is the light of life and saved us. Let his light now shine through us so that others may see your good works and give you glory. Lord, work through us into the ministries of food for the poor. Gracious God, we thank you for your abiding presence in all times of life, especially in our homes by your word. Protect our youth from all temptation and sin. Lead broken families to confess their wrongs to you and to each other. And then to forgive each other as Christ has forgiven them. Open the hearts of married people, especially those who celebrate anniversaries, and be with those who are preparing to enter that new union of marriage, that their love for one another may never grow weary, but deepen and grow through every joy and sorrow shared. Lord, be with the elderly as they cope with physical limitations and weakness. Give them spiritual strength to cling to your mercies, which are new every morning. In government and law, Father, you work to establish and preserve order, protecting the weak and fostering godly virtue. Bless our president, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Bless all who defend us in the armed forces. Aid us in the emergency and medical fields, or inform us. Hinder those who oppress any with mistruths, violence, or fear. Almighty Father, as you continue to uphold your creation, be with us all as we suffer under the curse of sin. By your will, grant healing to the sick, comfort to the lonely, relief to those whose hearts are heavy with grief, and aid to those who are in any need. Lord, today we bring to you, especially, our brother and our director of Christian education, Dylan Zoke. Lord, as you have called him to serve in a new role in your kingdom, bless him in the teaching ministry at Concordia Prep in Towson. Lord, give him peace and strength through this time of transition. And may we, Lord, as the congregation of Galilee, his family here, support and encourage him every step along the way. All these things, Lord, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and who rose again, and who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, today we are considering the ministry of food for the poor and how the Lord might flow and reflect his light through us. How we might be able to be overflowing in our blessings. But we realize we do that because of how we've been blessed. We have 
the only true God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who has blessed and nourished us in all of our days. So hear now a blessing as you who have been baptized into that name. People of God, because of the death of Jesus Christ, your work and your rest are now in God. In holy baptism, you died with Christ Jesus to the forces of evil, and you rose to new life as members of his body. In baptism, you receive God's promises of his presence, along with his forgiveness of all of your sins. In baptism, you also renounce the devil, his works, and all of his ways. I ask you now, will you continue to live in this faith in God's promises given in baptism? Struggle to renounce the devil and strive to live in the fellowship of this community and rest of the church. I will, and I ask God to help me. Now, because of the faith given to you in baptism, God's love in Christ Jesus reaches through you to minister to the poor, to the outcast, the powerless. Will you continue to such a life of service? I will, and I ask God to help me. Let's close in prayer. Almighty God, you led the children of Israel through the mighty sea to freedom and to the promised land. So lead us on our journey this week, blessing all we seek to do in your name. Grant us continued faith in you and in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, into whose death and resurrection we were baptized. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together for our last song, the, the Lord's Prayer. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, and right here in my heart. Where is Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. think of that song as we go out from this place. As uh, Pastor Mac reminded us, as you head out, if you have those envelopes with you and if you are able to give a contribution today, please give them to me. We'd be happy to collect them all and send them back to Food for the Poor. If you don't have anything today, if you'd like to mail them, use the mailers that are there. Uh, what a wonderful day to go out and enjoy the weather, share that faith, shine Christ's light to the world. So the worship is over. Now let the service begin. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. Lord, it's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. Forever and ever, the kingdom is yours. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be.
Thank you for joining us in our worship service today. It was a pleasure to have you with us through word and spirit and technology. Now, if you are in the Pasadena, Maryland area and would like to learn more about our family at Galilee, well then give us a phone call or uh, drop us an email. We'd love to be able to share with you more and more about what we believe, teach, and confess as Lutherans. And if you're not from the Pasadena, Maryland area, but would like to find a church family near you, then please give us a phone call or email and we'll point you in the right direction. Now, I want to say in a personal way, thank you so much to all of our generous and faithful servants, our volunteers, who help to put our worship services here together. From the musicians and all those who work behind the scenes, technology, wow. We have so many involved with our worship at home, with our weekend worship ser services. And so if you want to come back and be part of it with us, hey, do that. Click on the like or the subscribe buttons, and you can receive notifications of an upcoming service. Again, services on Saturday, Sunday morning, or our Wednesday worship at homes. Last of all, have a wonderful day in the Lord, and may God be praised.